Welcome. Being together is a value that we cherish. We love fellowship. We love times that we can assemble and worship and study together. So these are strange times. We miss being together. That's a value that we cherish. We want you to be safe, healthy, strong in the Lord. So we're providing this video to help you with a word of encouragement and also a seed for a thought that you can have further discussion in your home. So we hope that you will use this video for that purpose. Even in these difficult times, listening is critical. Listening is sometimes a lost art. What makes listening so difficult? Usually it's distractions, that we are filled with our own plans and purposes and prioritize priorities. And so those things just get in the way of us really giving our undivided attention to the one that we're listening to. Sometimes our plate is full and we're busy and we just don't take the time. Listening can be improved when we slow down. One of the things during this strange time of coronavirus is that we can slow down, try to listen. Listen to God, listen to the government, listen to one another. Cherish the relationships that we have. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.13, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, or teaching. That's a good advice for us right now. Take time reading the Word of God, reading good material that will build you up. Encourage one another and help to share those teaching thoughts, those moments uh, that you have a realization of what God is doing and what God wants to do in all of our lives. In 1 Samuel, it was a period of time when the judges were ruling. During that time, the children of Israel fell into sin, and they would fall into punishment or oppression. They would cry out to God for deliverance, and God would send a deliverer, a judge, and then they would be restored. During that cycle that we see in the book of Judges and in 1 Samuel, that cycle was characterized by the statement in Judges 17 and verse 6, Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. As we look around at this current situation, do you feel that there are some people who are doing their own thing? They're doing what is right in their own eyes, and they're not really thinking about others. They're not trying to be loving or caring to help others in this time of crisis. When we think about what the Bible says, we certainly want to be caring, helpful, loving, as we serve our God. In 1 Samuel, Eli was the high priest, and Eli, Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and they were wicked. And Eli did not restrain them, even though he knew some of the evil practices that they were carrying on in Israel. Hannah was a woman who was barren, and she loved her husband, Elkanah, very much. She wanted to have a child. As she came to the tabernacle, she was praying, and in her prayer, fervently, her lips were moving, but she wasn't saying anything. Eli saw her, thought that she might even be under the influence of alcohol or something. But as he approached her and realized where her heart was and the heaviness that she had because she had no child, he realized the sincerity of her request. And the Lord heard Hannah and answered her request. The son that she asked for was given to her, and she promised that if she was given that son, that she would dedicate him to the Lord. So at the right time, she brought him to the tabernacle and allowed her son Samuel, which means heard of God, to come and to work and minister with Eli at the tabernacle. Eli was a special boy, and he was very good at listening. He followed the instructions that Eli gave, and, and he was trying to be faithful to serve as a priest. Samuel serves Eli as a boy, which means he was 12 years old or maybe a little younger and the word of the Lord, according to 1 Samuel 3 and verse 1, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. What that rare occurrence of the word means, that it was precious. Is the word of the Lord precious to you? Are you listening to what God has revealed for you? During a time like this, we need to really keep our ears open and our minds attentive to what God is saying to help us to listen. On one occasion, here in 1 Samuel 3, as Samuel lay down at night, and the lampstand, the seven-branched lampstand that burned the oil, had not yet gone out in the middle of the night. And Samuel hears a voice. And so in 1 Samuel 3 and verse 4, 
and verse 6 and verse 8, three times Samuel goes running into Eli and says, here I am, you called me. And Eli finally realizes the third time, he says, Eli, he says, Samuel, uh, I wasn't the one calling you. The next time you hear this, here's what you say. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And so Samuel went back, and the fourth time he lies there on his bed, and the Lord calls him. And in 1 Samuel 3 and verse 10, the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Samuel was being a good listener. As the Lord spoke to him, he opened his ears. The way in which the Lord addresses Samuel, he says, Samuel, Samuel, that double reference of name is found only a few times in Scripture with Abraham and Jacob and Moses, and it's meant to get our attention. Can you imagine the Lord calling your name, calling it twice to make sure that you're really listening to what he says? How do we respond when we realize that God is speaking to us? Do we have that attentive ear, that open ear that allows God to say what he wants to say to you and to me? Speak, Lord, your servant hears. In John chapter 17, Jesus prayed for his disciples. He said, I do not pray for these alone, but for those who will believe on their word. The word that the apostles spoke was to produce faith. Our belief, our trust in God is based upon the revelation that we have revealed, recorded, and preserved in the New Testament. But do we really listen? Jesus also said, my sheep hear my voice. We prove that we are his sheep, that we are following him by listening to all that God says. Jesus gave a challenge to some of his listeners. He said, the one who hears these sayings of mine and does them is like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And when the winds blew and the storm came, the rains fell, that house stood. It stood firm. Our lives are firm. Our lives are stable when they are built on the Lord. When we are truly listening, Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Our listening is tested by doing what he tells us. Jesus, as he sent the disciples into all the world to preach the gospel and to make disciples, he said, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That great commission tells us that we not just teach one another or share the gospel initially, but we continue faithfully to strive to live and to do all that he wants us to. That requires being good listeners, to keep our attention, our focus, and our obedience to him. Here in this passage in 1 Samuel 3, in the next verse, the Lord tells Samuel in verse 11, he says to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. Have your ears ever tingled? Let me share with you a couple of dates, and maybe this might allow you to analyze whether you've ever had your ears tingling. For some who are old enough to remember, December 7th, 1941, the bombing of Pearl Harbor certainly made ears tingle. If I say 9-11, September 11, 2001, certainly was a day in which our ears tingle. Maybe you're sitting there at home, confined, quarantined to some extent because of the coronavirus, and you're thinking, when I started hearing about this pandemic, and I started thinking about what these consequences are, and especially if you're stuck watching the TV and listening to the news hour after hour, which, by the way, I would encourage you to turn the TV off periodically. If you listen to more than three hours a day, you're probably going to be more anxious or disturbed, and your faith is going to wane by not keeping your listening ear turned to God. If you are concerned about this coronavirus, draw your faith, your strength. Let me tell you this. We have, because of the Word of God, we know the outcome. We know the end. Oh, I'm not trying to spoil the end of the story. I'm just telling you, if it comes down to Jesus versus this virus, Jesus wins. And no matter what happens, if our souls are placed in his hands, if we have obeyed the gospel and are living our lives according to his word as good listeners, then we know where our eternal destiny will be. So we want to keep listening. But Samuel is told that 
everyone's ears will tingle at the message. When we read the Word of God, do we understand what it is? One of the things that Samuel was told was to give Eli a message. That test was a message of bad news. We have the opportunity, and our test is to share good news. Because, because we have Jesus, we have the victory that comes through Christ. Good listeners will be honest. That is, we're going to be obedient. We know that God is in control. He is sovereign. And so our listening means that we want to be attentive. Like Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, it's not just calling him by name, but it's doing his will. Our peace, even in times of crisis, is drawn from the fact that we know what God says he will do. He will keep his word, so let's keep our commitment to him. Our purpose, Samuel got up the next morning after hearing this, and he opened the doors of the tabernacle. Samuel didn't lose his way. He didn't all of a sudden say, well, I'm more important. I'm too important to open the doors. Samuel went right back to doing the work that he had been given. This crisis will pass. In the meantime, we have opportunities to encourage and to serve, to be able to call people and tell them what we've been thinking, what we've been reading, where our trust is. We also will have the opportunity to get back to work. It won't be long. And when we have that opportunity, we need to be faithful. In the meantime, Listen to God. Listen to the government to be able to show your love for your neighbor, be able to be concerned about them. Don't be presumptuous. Don't let yourself be filled with pride and think that you're above all of this. We're all in this together. So let's continue to listen to the word that we're giving. Good listening requires humility. Eli had not restrained his sons, even though he knew better. He knew what he should have done, and he didn't do it. Samuel knew what he should do, and he did it. Our good listening is to show the humility to listen to God and to give him attention. One of the things that I've thought of is while this pandemic is going on, it gives us the opportunity to spend time with the ones that we are living with, your family, your wife. You know, for guys who've been watching sports all the time, and all of a sudden the sports aren't on, that woman sitting down there at the end of your couch, that's your wife. Get reacquainted. Spend time together. For parents, spend time with your kids. Enjoy seeing them and talking with them. Our lives get so busy. Researchers recently have shown where parents oftentimes spend as many as 150 meals a year standing up. That's about 14, 15% of those meals that we eat. Slow down, sit down, spend time together. Eli was very humble and accepted the judgment that God gave, even though it was painful for him. And God's prophecy concerning Eli and his sons and his whole family came true. As we think about this and apply it to our lives, I remember the story of Alexander Papadaris. Alexander Papadaris lived on the island of Crete, and he, as a boy, would run around the island and see the graves, mass graves, of Germans and Cretans who had fought during World War II. Alexander Papadaris found a piece of glass. It was from a wrecked German motorcycle the side view mirror. He took that piece of glass and he took it against a stone until he got the glass where it was round and it wasn't sharp. It was safe for him to hold. And as a boy, Alexander Papadaris went around and tried to shine, reflect the light off of that mirror into places where the light would never go, into a hole or some space between rocks. He became fascinated with that. Later, as Alexander Papadaris grew up, he founded an institute for peace because he wanted to let the light shine where otherwise it might not. Let me encourage you, let the light shine through you during this crisis because you're a good listener. Listen to God, listen to the government, listen to each other. I was encouraged to share a word for some of our young people and so I thought about this. If this pandemic goes on and people keep hoarding toilet paper, Probably the most popular birthday gift in 2020 may become a bidet. So there's your word. For the young people that Craig told to listen for that, there it is. We love you. Be safe. We miss you. We look forward to being back together very soon. God bless.